luck is coming my way Wherever I go, hard luck is there to stay Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way Just off Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood, California, I come across this giant wall mural. I don't even know if you want to call it a mural. It's more like a 3D art installation saying human after all. This thing is massive and it is beautiful. And when I say 3D art installation, I am not kidding. Just look at that thing. Even though I wish we can get closer for a better picture, I am kind of glad that it is behind this fence. For some reason whatsoever, you can't get onto this property. It is closed off. That's a good thing, because I'm sure other muralists or somebody would probably get in there and deface it. Kind of surprised that nobody has hopped the fence yet. Don't get any ideas. Well, at least for the time being, this beautiful, beautiful piece of art is untouched. I can live with that. And you can see up there in the top left hand corner the name Punk Me Tender is the artist. Don't know who you are man, or woman, but much respect. Today I found myself walking down Sunset Boulevard and I wanted to do something a little bit different than our usual Grim Life collective videos. I wanted to take a trip down memory lane, so to speak, to about 20 years ago, to the very, very first time that I visited Hollywood, California. About 20 years ago now, around Christmas time, I flew from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Los Angeles, California to stay with some friends and to just kind of clear my head I was going through a lot of things at the time my very first night there if I remember correctly it was the Hollywood Christmas Parade on Sunset Boulevard and that is where our story begins walking up to Sunset Boulevard on the left hand side is the CNN building and on the right hand side is the old amoeba music store and I say old because it's it's now officially closed and who knows exactly when they're going to open again. But this time they moved to a better location up on Hollywood Boulevard across the street from the Funko store. But it is abandoned. Nobody really knows what's going to go in here now. But as I was walking up, I stopped and I had to take a look at this and show you guys. You know, we've all seen abandoned, you know, buildings. But here is the abandoned Amoeba Music parking garage. Crazy, right? It is so quiet down there. So dirty, yet so clean, completely off limits. That's pretty cool. And on the walls entering the parking garage, there's all kinds of different stickers from different bands from over the years. Not sure what is original and what is relatively new, or if somebody just put them there to pass by. But that's pretty neat. And looking up here, get a little closer, raise the camera. You see Jack Nance from David Lynch's Eraserhead? For those of you who don't know, Amoeba Music was the place to be in Los Angeles and Hollywood to buy music, movies, uh, records, CDs, and occasionally you would have the, the, the concert or a book signing or a celebrity signing of some sort. I actually saw Black Flag perform here that year that I came to Hollywood. It was neat. Turn in the corner, you can still see those circles that would light up at night. Pretty iconic. Everything's all dark now. But before we go further down the street there to look at the front of the building, let's see if we can go across the street and get a pretty decent establishing shot. Standing on the corner of Cahuenga and Sunset. Here's the old Amoeba Music Building. Who knows how long this thing is going to be here before they tear it down or make it into something else. Man, I wish it was still open. I mean, I'm glad that they have a new location and they're still growing. But this is pretty epic. 
closed right now due to the pandemic. There's the dome, the Arclight Cinema. Had no clue up until I moved here that it was right across the street from Amoeba Music. From this angle, you can actually see this little bulletin board. That's where they would put up upcoming in the stores of different release dates or music, bands that were gonna be playing, different events. All that's changed. Let's see if I can zoom into the front of the building here where it used to say Amoeba Music. All the lettering has gone. I mean, it makes sense. The store is not here anymore. Now I point out all these different things about Amoeba Music because of one thing. Right there. This sidewalk. This curb. I was sitting right here when technically this story begins. Oh man, this happened so long ago. I really hope that I'm remembering this right. 20 years ago, the Christmas parade here in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard. Me and my friend Dave are sitting right there on the curb in about the center of your screen watching the parade and he asks me, now that you're here, if you can meet one celebrity, who would it be? Now at the time, I was listening to a whole heck of a lot of Morrissey. In fact, his album, You Were the Quarry, just came out and instinctively, I said, I'd really like to meet Morrissey. I don't even know if he lives here, but if he does, I'd like to meet him. Not even five minutes after that, I kid you not, who comes walking up this sidewalk? Morrissey himself. I'm not even kidding. It is something straight out of a Hollywood tale. But it was Morrissey. Dave, he sees him first. He taps me on the shoulder and starts hitting my shoulder and pointing and said, dude, look who's walking up right now. I turn around and he walks right on by. I don't even say anything. And I'm gonna turn the camera this way because I'm sitting on the, the, on the, the sidewalk next to Amoeba. And he goes right down here into the store, Amoeba Music. And I don't know what to do. Well, I did what I typically do. I have no shame when it comes to this. I go into the store after him. I remember walking into the store, tracking him down, only to find him over in the CD section looking to see how many copies of You Over the Quarry they have in stock. With no shame, I walk up to him. So I ask him, hey, can I get a photo with you? Big fan, huge fan, I'd love a photo with you. And in the coolest way possible, he says, sure, but not in here, let's go outside. So he puts his CDs down, he walks out the door with me behind him, and I hand my friend Dave our camera. And right here on this corner of Ivar Avenue and Sunset Boulevard, Morrissey and I pose right here against this lamppost, and Dave takes the picture. It was a highlight of my Hollywood life, even before my Hollywood life began. After taking the photo, Morrissey continues his walk on down Sunset Boulevard. Dave and I go back to the curb and watch the Christmas parade. It was a great start to a new life. And then something bad happened. You're not gonna believe it. Again, true Hollywood fashion. That night we go back to the house get some sleep. I'm elated. The next day, I go to look at the pictures, the camera, and I accidentally deleted that photo and every photo that I took that night. I was devastated. I haven't told many people that story, and for good reason, because I have no picture to prove it. I repeat, I have no picture to prove it. Even after 20 years, this story, telling it to myself, is still as painful as it was the day it happened. And one night, after arriving in the land of dreams, Hollywood, California, moments after saying he's the celebrity that I want to meet, I meet Morrissey in front of Amoeba Music. He agrees to a photo with me, and him and I pose in a really cool, like, you know, goth, 1980s, 
in front of Amoeba Music on Sunset Boulevard, and then, like an idiot, I delete the picture. What else could go wrong? You're gonna love this. Right now I'm standing on the corner of Sunset Boulevard and Sweetser Avenue. This building right here, I don't know if he still owns this, but 20 years ago, the supermodel, the super male model, Fabio owned it. The only thing I remember about Fabio is him getting hit in the face with a bird on a roller coaster. That was him, right? But our story isn't about Fabio. Instead, it's about a house that's all the way up Sweetser Avenue, right here off of Sunset Boulevard, that we're gonna talk about. Most of the time before I visit a location, I look up as much as I can information-wise about that area. This time I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm kind of going off of memory. Sweetser Avenue, the gate that I'm looking at right now, I'm sure he owns many, many properties. But this street is where Johnny Depp and Morrissey lives. And I'm about to tell you why I know this. Along the street, you will find two gates like this. And basically what he did, Johnny Depp, he bought what, two or three houses on the street from what I heard. I guess you can call it a legend if you will. Basically so he can have ultimate privacy. Here's one of the gates further up here, which is where we're walking. You'll find the other gate. It's beautiful, it's secluded. You see how this road is basically one lane, almost impossible to get two cars to go through here. Well, this is where the second half of my Morrissey story takes place. You see, the second day, the day after meeting Morrissey, Dave and I decide to drive to his house. We heard he lived up here on Sweetser Avenue next to Johnny Depp. So we decided to come on by. If I remember correctly, we were driving this old Chrysler red minivan. It was probably on its last leg. We turned this corner and spotted this house right here. This is Morrissey's house. Let's get a little closer look. Look how massive this place is. And of course, right next to him, this is the main gate of Johnny Depp's mansion. Well, one of his many mansions. In doing this, when we came up here and stopped to look at his house and to get a picture of his house, behind us, there was a dump truck that came out People were doing yard work, like some gardeners. The truck got stuck and we were stopped, I'd say, right about here. Car facing this way, Johnny Depp's house is behind me. Now if I turn the camera, I know I'm being all over the place. There's Morrissey's place. And this little cul-de-sac, right there. This is where the second part of my Morrissey stories takes place, this cul-de-sac. Here we sit, completely stationary, waiting for the gardeners behind us to get unstuck. And here, right in front of where that car is, there are some trash cans, green trash cans. And we're waiting, and we're waiting. Dave's driving, I'm in the passenger seat. When who comes walking down those steps, carrying a trash bag? Morrissey. Without seeing us, he walks right over, opens the trash, drops the bag in, comes back, getting ready to walk up the steps, and he stops and he looks at us. And Dave and I are sitting there in this decrepit old red minivan thinking, oh my God, he thinks we're stalkers. He's gonna call the cops on us. And we are sh we are, we're sitting ducks, basically. He smiles, he waves. And he goes back up the steps to his house. And that was it. And no, we did not get arrested. If you're watching this, I'm pretty sure you can probably go online and see who lives here now. I highly doubt Morrissey does. A lot of times, celebrities here in Hollywood change houses almost like they're changing socks. That in marriages and relationships. 
But this at one time was his house. I wish we could afford a place like this. Who knows, maybe someday. One of these modest, but massive mansions in the Hollywood Hills. And as for Johnny Depp, well, we are not going anywhere near this gate. There are cameras, no trespassing signs everywhere. And he's such a big celebrity. I don't even want to be anywhere near that property. That's just crazy to think, right? These are basically my neighbors. Down the street from where I live, Johnny Depp lives. And that's pretty much about it. A little story time. I guess pretty much every video we do has a certain level of story time to it. But this one just feels a little bit different. I've been thinking about doing this video ever since Jessica and I decided to move to California. So it feels good to just kind of talk about this and take a trip down memory lane. Maybe we'll do more videos like this in the future. Just kind of walking and talking and just showing different things, right? I mean, it is slightly different from what we do. I think. More personal, it feels like. We'll see. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 